name's <laughs> Hello. I will not laugh. I'll just, I'll just go. So bad at the accent. Okay. Hello. <laughs> Hello, my sweet friends. Welcome to Cozy Rosy Raids. Raids. The same thing. Yes. We've got an exciting oh. guest. Oh, that's great. This evening. That's great. <laughs> It doesn't look quite evening, but it's summertime. The windows are very bright. Oh, that's good. That's good. That's good. This evening is the first edition of Literature. <laughs> Where we get lit with literature. With my father, Dana. We have made specialty cocktails this evening in honour of the novel my father has just finished reading. So we'll be having conversations, cocktails. A soapy pipe. A soapy pipe. Quick break while we polish off our pipes. <laughs> for real though, my friends, thank you so incredibly much for being here. This is my, my father, Dana. I have alluded on the channel asking if you all would be interested in him making an appearance. And there was a very vast majority of you who was like, please, because we talk about books and we have a lot in common and we'll do a super quick introduction without trying to embarrass you or make you feel weird. So thank you for being here. It is a super amazing, talented artist, I'm musician. Huh? I'm already embarrassed. Are you embarrassed? So I will be linking the Spotify down below, so regardless of his embarrassment. Avid reader. I feel like we just have so much in common. Both very artistic, creative people. We send so much music back and forth to each other. I think we both influence each other a lot in our music taste and just love of reading, I think, and just anything creativity. We both feel things very deeply in terms of what we call melancholy, which we both really enjoy that feeling of bittersweet <laughs> sadness. And then I think using that to fuel creativity. Cheers, so Mike. Cheers. I think it's safe to say we're all very excited to have you on this channel officially. You've been in vlogs for like over a year now to actually be on the channel making your appearance. So just briefly, my friends, I wanted to chat about kind of like what, what we're planning for this little segment called Lit Richer is basically coming together, making uh, themed cocktails or drinks based on the novel we're going to be talking about, which is the book that you read this past month in July and discussing it, just having a very candid conversation. We literally have no script right now. We don't know what we're doing or what we're going to talk about, but just let Not it happen. Not in the least. Not at all. But I think when we're together in person, we just like flow with... Mm -hmm like talking about books. Yeah, so I definitely wanna hear like the plot of the story and the book that you just finished and read. And I think just highlighting it, hear more about like different books that maybe I wouldn't pick up. So of course we have like the full outfits, we have our pipes, we have a cozy little nook here and we're gonna have just like- Smoking jacket. Our smoking jacket. And we're gonna talk about books. So this evening, my sweet dear friends, we have decided to concoct a margarita. In honor of today's novel that we will be discussing, which is... John Living's <laughs> Avenue of Mysteries. Avenue of Mysteries. Right, yeah. A thrift purchase. Thrifting. We love for thrift. Friends of the library. Can't go wrong there. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. And another thing we like to do, putts around we do. bookstores and record stores. We do. I have so many vlogs where we're Earth. traveling to different places or at library book sales or walking around antique malls mm -hmm. looking at stuff. This is my thrift store buddy. <laughs> great car conversations. Yes, great car conversations and usually listening. Usually about music. Yeah, usually about music, listening to music. And my dad introduced me to some of my favorite bands ever at a very young age. Cause I would, Shame on me. I would steal your iPod and listen to the music on there. I did not know that. <laughs> I would just like put on your old, old, like actual the big iPod. The big in thing. My yeah. And I found Blink 182, Circa Survive, Angels and Airwaves, all the good stuff. That's how I found them, was because I would just go on your iPod and just hit shuffle <laughs> and I would find music. Yeah. Back to your book. Back to the book. And yeah, so you have read, I'm gonna kick off the conversation with this book though. You have read how many of John Irving books? I know so you have right a dedicated shelf up there. Yes. Uh, one, two, six or seven, maybe. Nice. A couple of the sad part is I don't remember a few of them. Mm. Because I was talking about this book that I was reading in August the first time when I said I was very frustrated with it. And it felt like it was just this dangling carrot kind of, come on, get to what you're saying, get to what you're alluding to, get to what you're alluding to. This is Lonnie. It's 
funny. So the very first book of John Irving's that I read was A Prayer for Owen Meany, mm -hmm. which turned out to be one of my favorite all-time books. And then after that, Cider House Rules. So every book after that, back in the head, my I'm going, Owen Meany, Owen Meany, have the magic of Owen Meany. Yeah. You know, and I haven't really captured it. Not that they were bad, it just hasn't stuck with me. The thing, and sometimes the books, it's the time and place, just like music. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where you are in your life or where you are physically, yes. mentally. And with Owen Meany, I was in California and we talked about Buzzsaw and Mel Foop. Mm -hmm. they, they were reading this book 10 pages at a time mm -hmm. because they didn't want it to end. And then have these amazing conversations about it. And I go, oh, I gotta read this. And, and it was amazing. It was, a, it was a very magical book to me. It, was, it, mm -hmm. it just really grabbed me. And the, there was a sense of um, mysticism or there was a otherworldliness within mm -hmm. it. No, it has been a long time since I've read it and stuff, but, but this one has really stuck with me. Mm. And, and it did have that magic because there is some magic in it or you know on, on other world type stuff whatever in it lots of lots of John Irving characters mm. you know they're all a little quirky but it was halfway through it I think it was nearly halfway through it when I was talking to you I was like ah, I'm just so frustrated and I'm telling you all about the characters and all this and that and you go well it sounds like you like it yeah <laughs> and I go, exactly maybe i do and then i went home and read it and it's like oh and i really just started really getting into it and i think there was a change in it too there was mm. a, some tender moments and stuff and i'm a when there's tender and kindness and there i was like Bleh! and it wasn't sappy it was like a really heartfelt mm. tender moment and i was going oh okay and of course there's some sadness in it and so there's the usual kind of john irving humor which is really kind of odd and then the other thing too was i think we talked about with this book and with the one i mean i found when i get really involved with the book the words disappear unless yes. it's a word that i stumble yeah. across i don't know and i'm just seeing pictures it's it's yes. it's the movie the cliche movie in your head you're seeing pictures and, and yeah. just living and living this one you know i mean it, it was being narrated to me i heard a voice it wasn't mine someone was someone was sitting next to me telling me the story mm -hmm. almost my, like my very own inner audio book mm -hmm. and i realized that two-thirds of the way through like oh I'm, I'm hearing a voice telling me the story. It's not just the pictures. Someone's, there's a voiceover yeah. to this, Yeah. which I thought was great. Yeah. And I find that amazing that your brain is able to almost like disconnect from actually visually seeing the words mm -hmm. and it's just playing in your head. I think that's one, maybe, I don't think everyone's brain works that way. Mm -hmm. I think we should be grateful that mm -hmm. it does. Like, I think for both of us, we almost like think when we hear songs, we see music videos. We both are that same way where we yeah. can envision very like cinematic things and we both like, I think, feel mm -hmm. things. So I think, I don't know, I'm curious to hear more about what kind of like literature specifically you like. If it is that emotive, like does it need to have that like tender, it needs to have some sort of emotion, but also I'm the same way when I'm reading a really, really good book. I'm not reading. It doesn't feel like I'm actually reading. Mm -hmm. It feels yeah. like I am just watching a movie in my head and I can see it all so clearly. Right. And that's like also masterful storytelling, I think. And that's yeah. like job well done on the author. But I think mm -hmm. you need to have all of those pieces together. Yeah. But then like you said, it needs to be like the right place at the right time in your right life for it to click. And that's why I think books are so subjective. Right. But we don't talk about it. Usually it's just like, oh, it was a good book. It was on the bestseller list. Or it was just like, this was a shitty book. Like, mm -hmm. but... I think there's so many components that go into it. Yeah. Because it's art. It's still yeah, art. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel like for you to enjoy a book or to get anything out of it or for it to have an emotional, memorable impact on you? Because I know I'm this way and I know a lot of people who watch this probably know and hear from my vlogs and stuff like I need to have an emotional connection to a book to give it like a full five star rating. I need it to like evoke some sort of emotion mm -hmm. in me. And I feel like that's hard to do. I'm just curious if you feel that same way. Like you want to feel emotionally invested. Yes. Well, yeah, I think, yeah, like in, like in a movie too, or, or a show or in a book, I think generally I need someone to root for mm -hmm. or to care about. Yeah, something something emotionally to grab, grab a hold of. Yeah, again, to make me care about them, to make me, want to to find out what happens to them or try to figure out what's happened you know what's going to happen like like in this one there's all these illusions to what's going to happen in the future even though it takes place uh -huh. in the future he flashes back in his flashbacks he's he's dangling these 
And he's like, oh, something's gonna happen. And the more he does it, it was getting frustrating. And I do think at times, he repeated himself a little too much. He said that already. Yeah. I didn't need to be quite so reminded. It wasn't a huge thing that rubbed me wrong, but it, I would go, uh, you know, yeah. it would kind of take me out of that spot because it was yeah. one of those things that, you know, yeah. wake up, oh, you know. I guess now would be a good time for you to tell us the plot of, was it the Avenue of is that Mysteries. Madness? The Mysteries. Avenue of, of Mysteries. Mysteries. Which, if they have, this is the title, and this is only mentioned one time in the book. Oh. That the, the, the phrase Avenue of Mysteries, as that to best in my recollection, either in just one part, maybe a couple of times, but I remember just once mm. reading about it. It was a weird thing for me for that to be the title of the book. It's it's pivotal. I think there are other things that are more pivotal, but I oh. could have called it. Okay, but, so if you could name the book anything else. Oh, yeah. What would you name I don't it? know. I, ooh, I don't you know what? I don't know. So maybe Avenue of Mysteries. Maybe Mysteries, Mysterious Avenue. <laughs> Just switch the words around Just a little switch, bit. <laughs> switch it around. Yeah. Yeah, if you want to tell us a little bit about like the plot. We mm -hmm. don't want to give spoilers away. This is going to be a spoiler-free video. But if you can kind of give us the, the basic premise. It is about an aging author. There's, again, there's, there's John Irving things where references Iowa, you know, because he went to college there. I believe he wrestled oh. in Iowa. So there's always like these things. So he's an aging author. I believe it starts as he's flying back from like Budapest or something. And he keeps dreaming and his dreams become very lucid dreams, but they're all, he dreams about his own past. Oh. And so, and he grew up in Mexico and he, I believe he's 14 when the book starts. And um, his sister is like, like a couple of years younger, 11 or 12 or something. And her name is Lupe. So, but they live on a dump. They're dump kids. And so they um, scavenge. I'm guessing it's like, what, dump. like a, mine says, keep saying like landfill. Yeah. It's like, like actually it's where, like it's actual trash yeah. is. Actual okay. trash is, and there's burning trash. And so when you fly specs, there's a lot of mystery about everything. Even though the more you learn, there's still some mystery in, in everything, which I've just realized that. <laughs> like, wow, ah. there is mystery in everything. Even when, even when the book is done, you kind of go on, Oh, and then you have to think about stuff, but not everybody is fully fleshed out or full, but they're, but they're there enough that you care or there's, mm -hmm. there's reason for them to be there and they're not really shallow characters, but there's, there's mystery in everybody and everything. Okay. I'm going to interrupt here. I personally really enjoy when authors do that. They give you just enough of the, I call it distance mm -hmm. where it's like, they are fully fleshed characters. They feel three dimensional and they feel real, but they feel pushed away from us. Almost intentionally. Mm -hmm. Does that kind of feel like yes. what, like intentional yeah. though? I think it gives you, this is all you need to know. Oh. Uh. And then later I'll tell you a little bit more. So you do, uh. it's I like these little, it's like a little knot, peeling back the onion or peeling back something. Yeah. But I'm only going to show you a little bit. I'm only going to tell you, oh, this is because of this. Brother and sister live with um, to, 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 to Riviera or El Jefe or the dump boss. Oh. I'm the dump boss. Okay. They live in a shack. With the dumb boss and and at first i'm kind of thinking oh what kind of relationship is this order but he's a very caring caring father and there's this whole thing of like i can't remember if lupe's situation was the same i, I honestly don't remember but for his, and his name is um juan diego and so juan diego doesn't know who his father is it could be el jefe most likely it is but his mother cleans the um the orphanage for the kids also have a, a affiliation with they end up living there but the, mm -hmm. the, the orphanage is right there there's a, a brother Pepe who's looking after them and stuff but um, Juan Diego is, is a, a book rescuer mm. so he rescues every book and every book he rescues he reads it and a lot of them are the Jesuit te textbooks mm -hmm. from the orphanage and the church so he reads everything and even burns his hands saving books mm -hmm. the books are very sacred to Juan Diego and he rescues them from the because they burn everything in the dump if whatever you don't take it's everything's burned and they burn um like there's a lot of dogs there and stuff so if the dog dies they burn the dogs mm -hmm. um he reads everything and he teaches and he reads Spanish and English he taught himself to read English and he taught himself to speak English so he speaks Spanish and English really really well mm -hmm. and so that's his thing is this thirst I don't even know they don't even talk about that as a thirst for knowledge he just reads everything Mm. It just seems to be what he does. Mm. And he's really smart for a 14-year-old boy. And his sister, Lupe, speaks in a manner that nobody can understand her except for her brother. Mm. 
Mm. He has to interpret it for every everything she says. They go, he says what she says, but she can also read minds. So she's a mind reader. So she'll when someone's talking to her, she'll say something to him like, oh, he's thinking of sex or he's thinking of dogs or whatever. And then and one Diego may or may not tell the person. He he's he's the decider of what they get to hear from her, which I thought was interesting too. Yeah. So who should be screaming things? You tell him, you tell him, and he won't. So there's a little mystery there, but she, wow. she, she, can t she can read minds, and, she, and it's usually about their past. Like she, they meet this, they call him the parrot man. He's a new Jesuit from, from I believe, Iowa. Yeah, from Iowa, he comes in there, and, and she knows immediately why he became a priest. But, but she can't, she's very cloudy on the future. People see, want her to read the mm -hmm. future, but she is, that's kind of 50-50. And what's going to happen? But she is a very driving force in the book, pivotal to his success mm. in his life as a future writer. Because this is yeah. him still like looking back as 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 a better life, like, being out of the dump, um, whatever. She's she's already pretty early on saying, "When you're out of here," or mm. alluding to things like, "I'm trying try not to give away too much." Yeah. Stuff. So their mother comes and goes. You know, obviously, being, there's there's all this clash of of. Uh, being gay with the church mm -hmm. and and how they can or cannot function together, mm -hmm. which is fascinating. So Lupe is short for Guadalupe. In like this 1500s, 1600s, there, this, this peasant named Juan Diego came up across the Virgin Mary and she's telling him this and that. And she he ran into her like six times. And then when he goes to tell the bishop of the church, like no, I can't remember if nobody believes him or whatever. He has all these leaves and stuff on his on his cloak, whatever, and he throws them down, and the the Virgin Mary is em embroidered on his cloak magically, mm. right? So there's all these illusions to like what is a miracle and is not. A, that's a miracle, but it is worship. It's up on on the wall and everything. So she is named after her. It's it's the Mary of Guadalupe or something mm. like that. I'd have to look at it again. And he's named after the guy who. The vision of her came to him. I think she was telling him, build a shrine to me. So it became a shrine. And there's this whole thing about the books, about these shrines where people go to, to be blessed or be cured, you know, and, and it becomes like a circus. People crawl for blocks, you know, on skin knees to go to be, to touch the stone or touch this or that, or see the statue of Mary. There's all these places where it's just chaos, right? There's people... And, and it becomes like a circus. Well, there's this circus becomes, a, a true circus becomes part of this book uh -huh. as well, where they have a chance to get out of the orphanage and they might have a better chance with a better life if they travel with a circus because the circus can take care of them. And so the circus brings Lupe in as, as she could be the mind reader or fortune teller uh -huh. or whatever, and he's going to be her interpreter. And there's this whole thing about him wanting to be more than that. And he's and there's a lion tamer, and there's all these characters that flow in and out, but they're brilliant. And there are some bad people, or one bad person, but he has a role in it. If he wasn't there, who knows what the future would be. So it sounds like the book also has some, like, maybe religious undertone? Or is it overtones. more of, like, overtones? So, yeah, it is, I believe. So, again, Juan Diego rejects religion, but not God. Mm. Right, because the Catholic the Catholics and Jesuits have all these rules, and and he feels that in Lupe feel they, like the Catholics came in and stole their culture. Right, they talk about how Christians or whatever steal, like they stole Christmas, they stole mm. Easter, made it their own. They kind of do that with cultures too. They kind of stole it. So so Guadalupe, she's basically Mary, but she's always shorter and darker skin. But she doesn't seem to have the same powers as. Mary does, even though they're the same. So Juan Diego is also a teacher, a professor at a college, a writing professor. There's a student that looks after him, or I'm trying not to give too much away. Whatever. <laughs> it's hard. But but he also, but he is a staunch Catholic, and they argue everything religion and secular. Mm. They they argue it constantly, and so there's this push and pull: what you can believe, what you can't believe, and there, there's that belief, you know, that you're you hold your religion so tight that you can't quite you can't see reality but if you hold reality so tight, what, what's there to believe in kind of thing mm. so yeah so religion is i think the, the point of the book mm. faith mysticism in a way there's a couple of points where they talk about miracles and there's one part in here that the statue of mary weeps oh uh -huh. and everybody's there like a lot of characters, most of the main characters are there, including two old Jesuits that run the orphanage. And they're seeing the statue weep. It's a, 
like a 20 foot sculpture, whatever, Mary, and it's raining, it's falling, water's falling down on them, and, and, and they're going, it's a miracle, it's a miracle, and then the Jesuits, even though they see it, are saying, no, it can't be yet, we ha we have to go and log it, and we have to get approval, and they're all screaming at them, can't you see the zeros? They go, yeah, but we have to, we have to prove that it actually happened, and you, there, there's steps you have to take before the Pope can say, yeah, it was a miracle. So they're kind of uh -huh. denying, they're not denying it, but they just can't of give it the official stamp of approval, even though with their eyes they see it. It's just fascinating because they're following the rules, right? Yeah. And, and, and so Lupe gets mad because it took, it took the miracle of Guadalupe like 250 years to become a miracle, right? Mm -hmm. They have to go through all this bureaucracy to be oh. dubbed a, a miracle. Other part of that I found interesting is why is it a miracle? Yeah. We, we impose that it's the doing on it, right? People flock to the waters to be blessed by certain waters or touch certain stones or whatever just so they can be cured or whatever. None of that was promised. It just wept. Yeah. <laughs> or it just appeared. I found that wow. stuff fascinating. Yeah. So like I said, those kind of things, again, it was, and weaving in, in and out of the story, it goes, it goes to the present, it goes to the past. And there's, there are two women that come in Play. And it took me a long time trying to figure out if they even existed, if it was just a figment of his imagination. But other people see him, but they keep alluding to like even he, even he's doubting that he even sees them. But, mm -hmm. You know, he has relations with them both, and it's a mother and daughter. It took me until just recently to kind of go, oh, I think I know who they are, because I ended up in the book and I'm kind of going, well, what about what? Yeah, <laughs> I don't get what about. And they go, oh, I think I know. So. Oh, that's so maybe cool. when you oh. come back, people are going to ask, or maybe other people have their, they know, or think they know. I, obviously, I, who knows, unless you talk to John Irving, and I, and I haven't. Right. We're, on, we're not on speaking terms. Should be. We should be. Yeah. Well, actually, it's not like he lives in Canada. Yeah, he used to live in Toronto. Yeah. For longest I think, time. I think on that book jacket, so he lives in, in Toronto. Toronto. I'll just go okay. give him a visit. I mean, there you go. Yeah, yeah, let's just let's just go. No, it sounds like it sounds like these characters are really quirky and unique, enjoyable. Like hearing you talk about it makes me feel like I want to read this book just so I can experience the characters along with mm -hmm. because I love that like I call it magical realism mm -hmm. almost where it's like these characters have certain abilities or if it's like these characters like you said like the mother daughter duo mm -hmm. when it kind of feels like is it real or is it not mm -hmm. and i just love books like that that actually make you think and they require a little bit of brain power and you don't necessarily get that like perfectly wrapped up tied in a bow mm -hmm. ending mm -hmm. i like it when it's a little bit more elusive this wasn't handed to me in like a silver spoon it's like what do i think it means who do i think this represents what are the metaphors and like this one i was i, I did quote go what the F? It, it was a good enough book where I realized, oh, because I can finish a book, move on to the next one. Oh, that was good. And this one, it just keeps, I'm trying to read another one. I keep going back, thinking more of this one. Mm. You know, because you're trying to figure out who these two ladies are. You know, because because other people see them, but they call her, the these little children, go, they call her the woman who just appears. Mm. And like, they, they seem to appear and disappear. Right? They come and go. With no one really seeing them come or go, they're there. So then it means they're thinking like, oh, then they come and go in his imagination because he also takes, he's on medications, he's on um, beta blockers and Viagra, and he needs the beta blockers to sleep sleep properly. But he he gets off his schedule, and he'd rather not take them because he dreams more vividly without them. Um. And but he's it's healthier for him to have the beta blockers. I can't ex remember exactly why he's taking them, but they make him less of a human he's he's like drugged and less energy mm -hmm. and stuff obviously i don't always remember this much from books so. yeah I think, again i go always back to like sounds like you like it yeah <laughs> see when we were in the car together you were telling me in a lot of detail about this book mm -hmm. and about how like i think dynamic the characters yeah. are and how much it sounded like when you're talking about them like there's like a fondness like, it's mm -hmm. almost like you're talking about friends. Yeah. You know, with these characters. Like, you can remember a lot about them. You almost, like, sympathize. I don't know, I can hear it when you talk about it, too. Right. But then, yeah. Just but I was like, just so You frustrated. were frustrated because it I was... was like, you said on. it was, like, kind of breadcrumbing. Yeah. Was, almost. Yeah, here, like, here's a carrot. Come yeah. on, go get it, get it, get it, get it. And you get there and, like, no, no, no. It's, you gotta you gotta read more to get to figure this out because he keeps alluding to things. Mm -hmm. He's alluding to... And which I, I, I found really it had to be intentional that he alluded to things so much that it became 
obvious that you you became the, you knew it was going to happen. I knew it was going to happen mm. in certain things, mm. and it didn't make it, I don't say it didn't make it a, less dramatic or less powerful. I think you 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 had already come to an acceptance mm. of this outcome, mm. and so you were already prepared for it. Yeah. But it was still going to be tough. It was like you know. You, like someone's in hospice, you know, you know the end's coming when it comes, but you're expecting it. it's still moving and everything, but it wasn't like the sudden slap in the face, like blammo, this yeah. thing. And like I said, it was, he, he, he led you enough there that you kind of got, okay, I know what's going to happen here. I don't know even how. Mm -hmm. and, and, and then what does happen is, it, I found it, it really is tragic and, and you wouldn't want that to happen. It was a purposeful gift. Mm. It's a sacrifice. Basically, it was a sacrifice. Well, it was. I think it the, was the thing that he's alluding to and stuff is he kind of it, it, uh, see. I'm trying to get to give it away. I'm saying yeah. things about giving it away, uh -huh. but it, but it's 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 this. I see. It's hard to say anything without giving it away. Mm -hmm. um, I'll mm. I'll stop. I'm put on my pipe. I got soapy fingers now. So, what would you? rate this book then, out of five stars, which is like the normal maximum for, for books. Halfway through, I was going to give it a three. Three is not bad. Because I was enjoying like it. That was like, said, when I was talking to you, I was at a three. I, was, I was even thought about it because I, I never thought about reading books still, you know, doing your vlog and stuff. Like, so three is a three. It's really good, well written. I'm really like, but damn frustrated. Yep. Yep. That you sounds know? like a three. Um, but I'm going to give it four and a half. That's because the yeah. the one part that, and I'm getting softer on that point about him repeating himself, like maybe like the intention of it. Now, like now, I'm kind of maybe understanding the intention of it. Mm -hmm. It was like this. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep saying this so you figure it out. I'm gonna keep saying it, figure it out. But I did find that frustrating. Mm -hmm. And and no, this is a small little pet peeve to have. But other than that, I thought I, would, I I really 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 enjoyed it. It's going right up there with only me. Wow. And I think we're going to have to reread some of those other ones. And that's interesting, too, because obviously some of it, Juan Diego talks to people, the older Juan Diego, people keep thinking yeah, these books are autobiographical. And they are not. Autobiographical. Oh, that one. That word. That's a lovely word. And Isn't it lovely? It's not in my English vocabulary. There's just a little bit more syllables. syllables. So much and I, yes. Sometimes I cut off. <laughs> The syllables. The syllables. Where were we? <laughs> oh, the, the, ow. Ow, I've got, ow! I've got it now. Juan Diego, when he talks to people, they, they keep saying, you know, these stories about you, and you know, I use my imagination. His is all about his imagination. Yes. But the books he reads, the, the books that he talks about that he wrote, are very similar to those. And we go, oh, there is Son of a Circus. Oh, that sounds like another book that he wrote. Like, like he's actually alluding uh, to his own. Like how I slip in and out of I, that accent. Yeah, that just like. I will go. I will go French now. You're gonna go French. I go French. See, you, you we'll see. French. I go French. See. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought it was interesting. So, like this writer, and and he talks about how people treat authors and like the overzealous fans. That they read all his books. You can tell when people read the books, and he, he's very happy that they do. But so they can be very annoying. Like this very mm -hmm. firsthand. Obviously, he knows what it's like, right? Mm -hmm. But then he's alluding to his own books mm -hmm. with different titles. I thought. I thought that was funny. And clever. That's you can almost like recognize like Cider House Rules or something. Yes, like that. that was one. That's the other book. Cider yeah. House Rules and Some of the Circus are the two that I recognized that he alluded to. Um, that I thought, oh, that's got to be those two. Mm -hmm. And he always has something with Iowa or wrestling, because mm -hmm. I believe he was a wrestler and, and Garp. He would he wrestled yeah. in Garp, you know. And yeah. See, I saw the movie first before I saw read the book. I didn't read it a couple twenty years. ago. What's the full title of that one? The World of Garp. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I've drawn everything. I've only read Prayer for Owen Meany, but Mom told me I have to read Cider House Rules this fall. Oh, so it's I'm a fall. Oh yeah. It's a fall. Oh yeah. 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 Oh, like. Apple Orchards, I need to... Did you see the movie? Oh, yeah. With Toby. Toby Maguire. Toby. 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 Oh, yeah. I watched it when I was You can pick an out. apple and ride a horse. You're going to see Biscuit. 
could also be Spider-Man. That's right. <laughs> he picks he's the apples apple. with his spidey's. With his spidey. <laughs> While he's on the horseback. While he's on the horseback. <laughs> Bareback. <laughs> Just <laughs> picking apples. Yeah. You can't reach that one. Oh, let me get it for you. <laughs> I'm Toby McGuire. <laughs> In a tough That's old Toby Maguire. I don't know what Toby Maguire. I guess a little bit more because Michael Caine is in yeah. Cider House. Toby well, Maguire's not English either, so. No, but Toby, Michael Caine. Michael Caine, right. right. Good night, oh. my children. My. Children. I can't do I have to hear it to do it. But. Oh, yeah. So I can like picture Good night, face. sweet princess. Good night, sweet princess. That's sweet really prince. good. Good night. Good night, sweet prince. Something like that. That's right? really good. That sounds like. I can't. I want to. I just. I can't do. I can't. <laughs> Transylvania. Good night, sweet princess. I keep doing. I keep doing like Transylvania. It's all boys, like, all right. I'm like, good evening. Good evening. Well, I don't know because I watched the movie when I was way too young. Right. Okay. Similar to many of the movies I watched as a child, um, that horrified me forever. Um, Sorry. That's okay. But uh, <laughs> Da Vinci Code. Bad idea. Oh, I never saw the young. movie. Mom took me. Oh, she took And I was in fourth grade, so I was maybe like eight years she old. She took you to cats, too. Um, yeah, that terrified me mm. as a kid. That movie's terrifying because there's the very self punishing monk yeah. um, who whips himself right. to shreds. And it's just, Whoa. anyway, with um, Cider House Rules, they like take in that young girl who mm -hmm. was pregnant and then they show like the C section. And I think that's also like I'm scarred for life by anything about like childbirth mm. because mm. of that. Like oh. it was horrifying. Right. And then yeah, Michael Caine's character with the mask yeah, and yeah. stuff too. So that that's really easy. Like he's there's the that that flawed character that can still have empathy for. Like mm -hmm. he's trying to help these kids and help these women and yet sucking on the ether. Yeah. Maybe to yeah. get through his day. But Maybe to face all that stuff. Mm hmm. Mm. Yeah, but that's why I think as I've gotten older, what I like in literature is like you have characters, or even in TV shows. Mm -hmm. Like we both talk about how much we like, like the show like Girls or the show Love. Mm -hmm. You know, like these characters, you you're constantly are just like you're rooting for them, but at the same time you're like, what an idiot! What are you doing? Right. Um, I think that dynamic. It's realistic mm -hmm. to feel that way about real people in your life and about yourself. But like, there's no like just good person, bad person. Right. Like it it really is this gray area. But then you add in like John Irving's almost like I don't know, when you were talking about it, it reminded me of like Ray Bradbury of like all the like this whole cast of quirky odd characters. Yeah. Again, it reminds me of Ray yeah. Bradbury. I mean, I just it's, thought of it too is like it's a it's a circus. It's a circus, it's yeah. A circus. And then they yeah. have like these otherworldly not super I mean could be realistic for all we know, like mm -hmm. powers of seeing mm -hmm. into the future and stuff, but there's something you know, magical realism or speculative about it. Yeah. Just kind of question it a little bit yeah. more. And I think that's the the draw for me too. Is like I do like like you. I like that. It's mm -hmm. like it's like I like to watch magic things, but I don't want to know how they do it. I know it's you fake. Did. Yeah. I don't want to know. Yeah. I want. I want. I know it's not. I know they're not mm -hmm. doing it. I want to believe that they're doing it. Mm -hmm. So I can See, be. Oh. In that, I can live in that mist. Or like I know it's fake, but they wowed me enough that I I don't want you to show me. I'm, I'm we worked in in California, and this guy who he the guys at the company I worked for he was a magician, and he had all these other magicians come over. But, but these guys were were way beyond. They're they're older than I am now, mm. right? And they were trying to do their magic, and I could see them. They just didn't have it anymore. Mm. You know, it was good, but I could I mean, you're right there, and uh -huh. I could see what they were doing, and I go mm. oh, and it broke my heart. Oh, I bet. Like, you know, one, yeah. I felt bad for them, and me too. It's like, I don't want to see that. Mm -hmm. you know? I don't want, I want to learn magic sometimes. Like, I, I, when you guys kids were little, I wanted to learn magic. I go, but I don't want to know how to do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, you talking about all this, I feel like is a really good metaphor for the religion factor in this mm -hmm. novel. Mm -hmm. You don't want to see if it's real or not. Right. You know, you want to it's believe. Faith. It's the belief. It's that faith. Yeah. It is that, like, I'm just going to believe in it no matter what. And, like, it sounds like the conversations mm -hmm. the characters are having. But then also with the circus, just believing mm -hmm. in the magic, in the... Yeah. I don't know. I'm seeing yeah. a parallel. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, that's what's, the whole thing. It was yeah. this whole how we handle all this stuff in our lives. Yeah. And how um, 
versus like the rules of it because there's some exactly. like there's like a there lot of that. like there's there is concrete there is a right way to do it though yeah. like yeah, yeah and there is bureaucracy and like pushing papers mm -hmm. and like or paper pushing yeah. that's the right way yeah. to say it yeah. yeah yeah there is a bureaucracy and there's rules to how things work this is what you can and can't do even to go to heaven to yeah. go to another magical place these are things you can and can't do it because there's this tad to give too much uh, away. But but there's the homosexuality, you know, mm -hmm. where do they fit in into these into that world, mm -hmm. right? They want to believe too, but they're shunned mm -hmm. or not shunned, or you know, some are accepted and it's like it's mm -hmm. it's it's real world. Yeah. Right. Oh, would you like another drink? I mm -hmm. have to drive home. Oh. Transylvania. Transylvania. Maybe. Perhaps you could turn into a bat and fly I home. I can fly home. <laughs> I think I'm okay. Thank you, though. I do not have to drive home. I know, you're already I can home. just shuffle up to bed. I don't even know if I said this at the beginning of this video. The reason we chose margaritas oh, because was it because it takes place in, in Mexico. Yes. And I think that's one point that I would like to bring up, just because I know I struggle with this, but I feel like it might just be like a newer thing that I think I've become a little bit more aware of because now there's vocabulary for it. It's where a most likely, you know, it could be like a male author writing a female character, mm. or it could be a white author writing Hispanic characters or Latinx characters. Right. You know, I think nowadays we have more vocabulary and understanding of how sometimes that isn't so great. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the culture isn't a good representation. So if like a Hispanic author writes Hispanic characters. It's called like an own voice mm -hmm. author. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious because John Irving is white, is Canadian. Did it feel like, I mean, I know we're both very white. <laughs> How did, I know we're Caucasian. Um, did this feel from your perspective as just a, a reader, did it feel culturally, historically, I guess, respectful? Mm -hmm. and accurate to at least like the the religion the actual like location mm -hmm. and atmosphere everything takes place like from your knowledge i know our knowledge from... is biased because we didn't grow up there but right i'm curious yes i again when it was being narrated to me in my head mm -hmm. i didn't question the things but i did like look oh is this a real place oh it is a real place oh is this oh, a real so place oh it up. is a real place oh they go to the philippines is this a real place is this a, is this a real thing oh hell yeah it's a real thing mm -hmm. and and so i think i i was even talking to your mom about it when on a walk because i goes the amount of research mm -hmm. because there are spanish phrases in there no i don't know if john i speaks spanish or not there are certain things in the translated where they say this and this and, and, and these dumps do they really exist and is this place really like this you know so there's a ton of research wow. which doesn't make him mexican or mm -hmm. anything but it, it didn't come from a place where i'm just gonna make it up but then mm -hmm. when you're saying that part of me is saying is is part of it isn't that what fiction is is making stuff up Mm -hmm. and, and, yeah. and then where is the line can they make stuff up and like can I like write a book about brain surgery and make everything up you know yeah. <laughs> it's like no and I'm not saying go out and do this but yeah. I, from this I'm just gonna make this stuff up it's like a complete fabrication I, I think I'd be pissed if I found out these all were made up mm. places but since they were real it brought a, a more concreteness to it and then made it the magical parts even more magical Mm -hmm. Right, so there's this heaven and earth. There's this, yeah, air and rock thing playing against each other or with each other. You know, it's a, mm -hmm. I think that made it more real. So no, no, I wasn't, I wasn't bothered by it. I didn't, I didn't. It, none of it came across as phony because there were, there are Americans in Mexico and their interaction with them and whether or not they get to know the, their language or the trouble learning the language and you know, the, mm -hmm. does that that wrestling with that too is. This is how we do it. And I think that's, but that was also spelled out between Guadalupe and Wendy is like, quit stealing our stuff. You, you, you made this your own, which is fine. You can be a part of it, but don't make it yours. Don't think that you came up with it. Mm -hmm. I think that was the thing they were, oops, that they called out in the book. Fascinating. Very fascinating. Any final thoughts that you'd like to, like to share uh, with your first ever, yeah, like first full ever. lit, Literature, video. literature, literature. Not quite lit, 
So perhaps I have to get pre-lit if we want to more like we a drunk history. Pre-literature. Yeah, yeah. We did have several other options for this cocktail conversation segment. One was drunk fiction. Books and booze. Or yeah. booze and books. But booze I, and books. you liked I like lit. literature. Literature. I'm a dad. Puns, you know. I'm honored that you liked it. <laughs> I thought you thought we put the lit yes, in literature. Put the lit it's in a party time. It's, yeah. it's, it's just yeah. chatting. It's, um, yeah, I don't have, no, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Once I complained about it, I loved it more. Yeah, do you think in talking about it, you realized how much you liked it? I, oh, I think Versus so. Versus if you did not talk about the book. No, I think I, I've been, and, and maybe, hi, hi honey. Yeah, when you asked me to be a part of the video, yeah, I, I thought about it a lot. Okay, but, you know, how much do I remember? Oh, dang, I remember a lot. Mm, yeah. <laughs> I don't remember names. I don't, yeah, you, know, you were. I, okay. and, they're still, and they're still with me. And, and the, the overall sense of the book, the, the melancholy, perhaps, or uh -huh. the sadness in it, you know. Um, and there, there was a, a part of, in the book, too, it's, and, I, and I brought it up to your mom. And I don't know if it was intentional or just how I read it. Is that a certain part of your life when you get older, your life is just the past, mm. right? What do you have forward to look to, for you know, event wise? I mean, yeah, you can get up every day and stuff, but all your main things in, in your life are they're all done with, right? So, at what point do you? It seems it, it, uh, hopefully it doesn't happen to me because I look forward to doing lots of things. But it is interesting, like yeah, yeah it becomes a certain point. You're like what? When does your life just become what already happened to you? Then reflecting on it and grieving it, which which in the book, I think that's part of it too. Again, there's that melancholy. It's that he, he's continually grieving. Mm -hmm. Or maybe he didn't grieve enough earlier on, but he's certain things. You know, he, he had a great life and stuff, but there's certain things that we all wish would have been different. So That's a profound thing to read, is that grieving, that loss, that like reflection, nostalgia mm -hmm. for your own life. Yeah. And there's Kai. Okay, boy. Kai. Well, I do believe that wraps up the first edition, first episode of Literature. Literature. And as you can see by the window behind me, it actually is evening. It is, it is, it is late o'clock. It's now. late o'clock. It's late o'clock. Oh, that, that parallel to drink o'clock. I hope you'll join us for future episodes. Yes, it was quite fun. And, you know, it's always fun to book. chat, chat shit with you. Can we chat, yeah, we chat shit. Yeah. We chat shit. Yeah. We just talk about books and life and weird, funny things and art. Music. Huh? Music. Music. I said magic. And I'm like, we did magic. talk a lot about magic yeah, we did. today. Yeah, we did yeah. talk about magic. We'd love to have you back. And this would be a fun, reoccurring thing. We'd love to. Yeah, and then you said you are reading a book right now, so you just let me know when you finish it. Okay. We can think of a cocktail, and we can mm. chat about that as well. Okay. And then I might be able to share more of like what I'm personally reading too, but right now I'm kind of doing a secret, a mm. secret reading vlog, so uh -huh. I'm reading a very... I'm going to look in your bag. I'm reading, yeah, I brought it with me, of course. Uh, I'm reading a secret book. Well, thank you. Thank you. Father Padre, for being here. Thank you, daughter August Lily. <laughs> cheers. You're empty, but cheers. I am empty. Well, thank you, friends, for joining us for this first ever episode of Literature. Uh, if you made it to the end of this video, let's comment some uh, some margarita glasses, um, some 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 pipes. I think there might be a pipe emoji. And, uh, and bubbles! And bubbles! There is a bubble emoji! There is a bubble. It's very new. It's one of my favorites bubbles. now. Some bubbles. Good idea. Love to hear your thoughts on the video. <laughs> be kind. Be kind. I do read be them. Be kind to my dad. He reads these comments, so be freaking nice. Because I adore my daughter. He does. He supports. Uh, so just, yeah, be kind. I hope you all enjoy us just, like, chatting. I hope you were able to just, like, join us, even listen to it in the background. You're, you're always welcome here, my friends. This is a safe space to talk about books and our thoughts and... Uh, you all are a part of the Cozy Rosie family. Thank you all so incredibly much for being here, my friends. I appreciate you, and I can't wait to see you all again very soon for my next video. Stay, Stay cozy, cozy, my friends. friends. Bye!